So which of these authors has refused to have age warnings on their books? Is it Rosen, Rowling or Pullman? The answer is all three. in a moment. Welcome back to the last part of The Last Right Stuff of the Week, where I'm joined by esteemed children's laureate Michael Rosen, author of such classics as uh, We're Going on a Bear Hunt, The Sad Book, and his latest, Even Stevens FC, about a hopeless football team that makes it through to the FA Cup final. It's a bit like Crystal Palace, except for the FA Cup final bit. And, uh... You're a Palace fan, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hard cheese. Croydon. Yeah. Um, <laughs> thanks. Uh, we were near, nearly near. Yeah. Um, so, who do you want to hear from today? Oh, weekend? we want to hear from people who want to know, really, what to do with their children and how to, how do they read to their children. Send them to a beauty parlour. Forget about reading. Get well, if you're going to send them to something like that, fill the beauty parlour with books. Why not? I don't know if that would be so popular. Well, why not? You know, if children come in, they get a bit bored while they're waiting. Read a book with them, you see. One of the great things about books, you know, people sit in airports and you see kids starting to kind of go, mm, starting yeah. to, you know, tweedling each other and all the rest of it. And you see some other people and they're sitting there reading books with their kids. Yeah. And you see the kids' eyes glazed over, looking at the books, thinking about things. You know, books fit in in all the spaces in between our lives, and we can show children that's what you can do. You know? Okay, we're going to also look at uh, books if you haven't got much money as well, which is worth thinking about. Uh, so if you want your kids to read more, help them tackle any reading gremlins, or you're worried they're not reading the right things, whatever they may be, uh, Michael can help with all of that. But first, you've got to make the first move and pick up the phone. 027 173 is the number. You best do it quickly, because it is first come, first served on this show, and we have a lot of calls. But first, I want to talk to you about these age warnings on books. Yeah. Uh, J.K. Rowling being the, uh, the latest uh, name to say, no, I don't want them. You yeah. were one of the first. Yeah. What's the problem? Well, if you put a number on a book... You're almost saying this is a book for them and not for others. That's what we're worried about, that you give a signal you on the cover of the book. When they put 18 certificates on films and I was 15, all I wanted to do was see 18 certificate films. So it would well, encourage perhaps... Of course, but it's quite broad banding. You see, you know, we know if you go into a bookstore, if you go into one of the famous chains, you go in there and it says picture books, you know those are for the youngest, then it's got young fiction and that's approximately 7 <sighs> to, you know, 9 or 6 to 10 or something like that, and then it's got older readers, you know, that's fine. That's all you need. You don't need specific numbers on books to tell people. None of us, when we write books, do we want to think our books are restricted. And imagine if you're a kid and you're in the playground and you're nine and the book says six on the cover. Right, no, you're going to hide it away. No, yeah, I'm not really yeah. reading a book by a six or a six-year-old. See you know. the problem, kind of reverse, yes, it could exactly. actually be negative. Yeah. You don't want to put readers off, you know. And you want, you so want... is the idea going to happen or not if J.K. Rowling says no? I think she's the final <laughs> straw to break the camel's back. I think, you know, that was the, the dam. And then finally, I think they are, um, whatever the word is, um, you know, they're not going to get away with it, put it that right. way. Uh, I think, yes, I think the matter has been won. I don't think the publishers okay. can win that. Okay, interesting. Yeah. I mean, Harry Potter, people know that, you know, there are children either hearing a Harry Potter book or reading a Harry Potter book from every age, from five to, well, 55. Um, so, you know, what would you put on a Harry Potter book? Nine? Uh, well, I don't know. That's, that's, I mean, well, that's you see. part of the problem. It would be very difficult You know, to I've say. been pilloried because I happen to have said that I thought that, you know, it's quite a difficult read for young children. It actually got twisted and people said that I'd said that Harry Potter books were boring. I hadn't said anything of the sort. But, you know, but people can work it out for themselves. You know, you pick up a book. Here, Judy Bloom. Here it yeah. is, forever. Now, this is... You know, people know about Judy Bloom. This is a book where it's sexually explicit. You have a couple uh, who get together and they talk about body parts. And yeah, it can't be a children's book. Well, let's say you're a parent. You pick up their book. You say, oh, it's nice. Look, there's a, there's a nice pink book and there's a little padlock on the cover. It must be a lovey-dovey book. You yeah. look on the back and it says, and when they decide that their love is forever, they have sex. So as a parent, you can read that and think, well, I don't want my four-year-old to read that. No. I will not be reading that bedtime for a four-year-old. On the other hand, you might think, well... My 12-year-old, actually, I think it might be quite good if she or he were to read about a serious relationship in which a couple have sex, and then, but the future is not as simple as they want it to be. So this is something that seriously discusses the problem. As it happens, so I think this is a terrific all, all book. All the information that anybody needs about a book is already on the book. Yeah, I mean, look, books give off signals. You know, if you see a book like this, Brown Bear, Brown Bear, what do you see? You know this is like a little rhymy, yeah. repeaty book. This is going to be great for a one-year-old through to a four-year-old, five-year-old, six-year-old. And maybe you might think, oh, well, that's quite nice because this could help my kid to learn how to read. So a slightly older kid, a six- or seven-year-old, be looking at that. Let's have a look how the letter A is. Oh, it's the other kind of A, but there you go. Um, and you think, oh, well, that's nice, lots of repetitions, blue horse, blue horse, that might be quite nice to hang on to okay. for an older child. Okay. OK, let's throw it open to you guys at home. Amy, who's on the line first, please? First caller is Gillian, and she's on line one. Morning, Gillian. Hi, good morning. Hi there, thanks for picking up the phone. Michael's here. How can he help you? 
Um, I have an eight-year-old daughter, mm-hmm. and she finds it not difficult to read, but she doesn't particularly enjoy reading. Um, I've tried loads of different books with her, um, and I keep saying to her that if she reads more, her spelling's going to get better, right. her vocabulary will get better, but it's just to decide whether I should have to force her to read or whether I should let her do it herself. Force her to read, gosh. Right. Um, An eight-year-old who won't. Yes. Well, well about Gillian, school, I can't, that's I the first order cost. I can't provide the magic pill, but if there's anything that is near to a magic pill for an eight-year-old girl, I would say Jacqueline Wilson. Yes. There you go, Jacqueline Wilson. She preceded me as the children's laureate. She is a magic writer. In, in my knowledge, you know, I've seen Jacqueline signing books with cues round the block. Yeah. You know, she, she's, she's attracted millions she's like of... She's like a pop readers. hero. Pop Absolutely. Yeah. She sold over 20 million books. I think this is one of her latest, Girls in Love. I love the Tracy Beaker Beaker's books. books yeah. She gets right inside seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven-year-old girls' minds. You know, she remembers so clearly what it was like to be a girl herself. She was a writer. And, and, and so an eight-year-old that doesn't read, is that because they've had a bad experience or they're just distracted? It's or? very difficult to say. Sometimes what happens in school is the children learn how to read, but they don't learn that it's enjoyable mm. to read. So you get a kind of can-read, don't-read situation. And so as a parent, you've got to make reading fun and exciting. Why not buy two or three Jacqueline Wilson books and read the first bit to her? You know, read her maybe the first five, ten, twenty pages or whatever, have a laugh with it yourself, talk about it, and then just every now and then give her a nudge. Have you carried on with that Jacqueline Wilson book? Have you carried on I, reading I, I, Tracy I have Beaker? to say, uh, those are my friends that have girls of that age, sort of yeah. seven through to ten, absolutely adore Jacqueline Hooked. Wilson. Gillian, Hooked. best of luck with your daughter. Let's have another one, please, Amy. OK, we're going to go to someone with a grandson who's five. It's Susan on line two. Morning, Susan. Uh, morning. Hi there, and I hear your grandson at five is an advanced reader, is that right? Y- yes, he is. And he's starting school in August here. Okay. And they're using the o- Oxford reading system. Right. That's... And the teacher was boasting at the, age, at the end of primary one, they should be finished stage one, and some of the more advanced kids will go on to stage two. Well, my grandson's already on stage nine. He's doing a book on stage nine. So where does he go from there at five? Exactly. Right. Is he going to be really bored at school? OK, good question. Yeah, it does happen. What is the Oxford thing she's talking about? This is know. called the Oxford Reading Tree, and it's what's called a, a staged reader. So you go yeah. through these different levels, and they're all about a... Uh, a couple of kids called Biff and Chips, and um, how can I be restrained and polite about it? I can um, tell you don't it like can it. well be quite boring, let me put it that way, for a mm. child like, I think, your a grandchild like yours, Susan. Yeah, it is a problem. I think the key thing is, if you, if you like, think of Oxford Reading Tree going on in a corner, which you're largely going to ignore, given that your child is an advanced reader, your grandchild's an ch- advanced reader. Make sure that your grandchild has always got a book stuffed in his pocket. Perhaps he, he's already ready to read these books, the Horrid Henry books. Uh-huh. They are fantastic. They are terrific fun. It's exactly, I think, you know, like a five-year-old boy would think it's so naughty. You know, that's what's the great thing about him. So maybe he's always got one stuffed in his pocket or stuffed in his bag and, you know, maybe he can do some secret reading underneath the table. So you're basically saying he can do whatever school wants in school time and out of school time, give him whatever it would, you would deem appropriate, Horrid Henry being, being a, a good example. Yeah, I think, I think maybe Susan's worry is that actually in school he will be bored because they will be saying, open your Oxford reading tree, read the next chapter on chips, Biff and Chips, um, and that he will be bored. It does sometimes happen. I mean, I'm afraid it does. So really, you know, the parents or you have got to actually say in school, in quiet reading time, silent reading time, can he please read his Horrid Henry book? Can he please read books of his own choice? You know, because he is with the bored stiff with the Oxford reading tree. Okay. That does happen. Susan, thank you for that. In five seconds, tell us about Team Read. Right, so, you know, you're worried about your kids during the summer holiday, they're bored, they don't know what to do. Send them down the local library, the Reading Challenge. The Reading Challenge this year, it's been going on for several years. The theme is sports. There's a great stack of books. Hey, look, your kid gets one of these. You get a wonderful pack inside. Your concept of five seconds is different from mine. Is it? it needs to be Did served. I run over five seconds? <laughs> Just a tad. Oh, well, keep uh, going. I can then. edit the read. Blah, 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 blah. Thanks for watching. Really appreciate it. Thanks to Michael for joining us. You can find out more about his good work by going to michaelrosen.co.uk. Details on screen. There you go, about now. Uh, the Right Stuff's back next week. Dominic Holland, Janet Ellis on the panel. Special guest, Irvin Welsh, one of my favourite authors. Tracy Ann Oberman, the actress and sports legend Jim Rosenthal. Have a wicked weekend. See you Monday at 9. Bye.